Here we are. Episode is a 14. I don't know what episode I we're on. I think it's 14. I think it's 14. And you're in person, like right wow. there on my couch. I'm live. <laughs> I'm alive. Uh, I'm alive. Yeah. It's so cool to have you back. Well, it could be for, for good. <laughs> it could be. Yep. Were you and you like the Jacksonville area? I really do. It's, you know, Jacksonville spread out and it has a lot to offer. I was telling Jeffrey the neat thing about Jacksonville is you're, you know, a couple of minutes from the beach. You can go down to St. Augustine. There's downtown historic areas. I mean, we really do have kind of the best of all the different worlds here, uh, which is cool. Yeah. And actually, the thing about Jacksonville is the, the demographics are, they skew a little bit younger, I say. Mm -hmm. All I say than Ocala, where I was from, or even like the villages, obviously, where everybody's like, well, I won't say what they're waiting to do, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just a little more hip and vibrant, I think, here. Yeah. You know? It's kind of almost in line with the way we feel about Nashville. Yes. Where, I mean, it Nashville's is. kind of a college town, I guess, but. Nashville, the thing with Nashville for me is that it has more live music. It has more cool restaurants, more things going on. Not to say that we don't have great restaurants here, but there isn't, I don't feel, as much as a kind of hip live music scene as there is in Nashville. So because that's I think thing. Nashville has an identity. Yes. Whereas Jacksonville doesn't. Like, um, uh, St. Augustine has an identity of being, mm -hmm. like, old and crusty, but <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, but then the best way possible. Saint, but then Jacksonville, like, it's figuring itself out. You know, and, the, and I talked to someone the other day, and I don't remember if I was at an antique mall or a salvage yard, one of the two, and the guy said, yeah, you know, Jacksonville just up until the 90s really didn't have a good way to preserve their history because there wasn't a good you know, downtown preservation type society. So a lot of the old historic buildings, at least downtown, there's still a few that you can find, but a lot of them were just torn down for new stuff. So now, you know, I think that we're doing better at preserving some of these historic areas. So we, we're trying to keep a little bit of the history like St. Augustine. And that's why I think Riverside and Avondale, particularly, we connect with so much because it's just a really cool historic area. actually like i like all the different surrounding area well not all mm -hmm. but i like there you know, are different experiences so you got the beach if you want to go to the beach like you mm -hmm. like you said and then there's um avondale and uh what's the other one that's near riverside right? riverside every time i think of that i think of um what is it I ended up south of memphis <laughs> working out on riverside that's a yeah. great song yeah Anyway, so there's that one. And then if you want something that's like older, then there's like obviously San Augustine. Yep. And San Marco too. So oh, San Marcos. If you're feeling like area. put your pinkies up and yes. wear your tea hat. And Edgewood is historic. I don't think we, I've taken you over in the Edgewood. I think we passed through it. And then Epping Forest is like old, old money. The Epping Forest? No, Epping Forest. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That Epping Forest that, is that, just that forest, man. No, Epping Forest. That's that estate sale I went to the other day was in Epping Forest. That was where Jeffrey was helping me today bring in some stuff for my industrial sale. And this guy, it was a huge house. He had, it was on the water and they actually had a cop directing traffic. I've never seen this for an estate sale, but because the neighborhood was so ritzy, they were very specific on rules. So they were backing cars in like at a football game, like all lined up in a certain row. Wow. And the lady was like, no, you can't park on the street. And she was having me do this whole like, you know, flip a whip and as Jeffrey says, and go back. It was wild. And then the house was like rooms inside of rooms. Like I actually got lost in this house. I love houses yeah. with rooms inside of rooms. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And I got, I got an original Seinfeld script. Mm. Um, which was cool. Uh, miniature uh, telephone. I think it's newer, but it, it's still neat. Uh, microscope, some Bakelite ashtrays that were really Those cool. ashtrays are very yeah. neat. And one of them is like a turquoise blue kind of a color. Yeah, they're cool. Uncommon for Bakelite, really. Uh, and the other one was brown? Like a red. Oh, red. <laughs> yeah. I mean, brownish red, sure. But maroon. Maroon. There we go. But the blue one is neat. 
Yeah, it was, th those are cool. And they have um, advertisements for a train, like an old uh, train corporation. So that's kind of cool. Um, what else did I pick up there? Well, I tried to get a jukebox. So uh, I no. could. Yeah. A big one? No, no, no. Oh. A, a miniature. One of the tabletop yes. of a diner? They oh, I was bit. Those things are like really cool. And half the time they don't work. Yeah, so this one, so here's the whole story with this jukebox. I saw it in the pictures, and I couldn't tell because they make these reproduction ones now. Like, just the photos were hmm. not good, and I couldn't tell if it was fake or real. But I was going with my, my friend, and it was for my birthday, so I couldn't go early and get in line. So I was like, well, we'll show up when it opens, and if it's there, it's there. So we go in, and I'm like, where are the jukeboxes? And the lady goes, oh, it's upstairs. Well, again, rooms inside of rooms. So I go the one stairs, no, there's like a secret staircase to a big pool table room that I could not find. And that's where this jukebox was. And of course, I call him my estate sale nemesis. He's not really, we're actually good friends, but I joke like that because every time I'm at an estate sale with something that I really want, he gets it first. And so, of course, I see him coming down the stairs with the jukebox. I'm like, darn it. So I go up to him and I'm like, oh man, that's so cool. And I said, look, if you're willing to sell it, I will buy it from you. And that's how I got my Coca-Cola clock. From him? Was from that guy. Hmm. So we've kind of become friends now. I mean, and I see him at estate sales. So he had the clock and I, the, not the clock. Well, he did have a clock, but the jukebox. And I was looking at it. I was like, yeah, this is original. I think those, now I haven't looked in a while, but I think those go for, Oh, now when the time I looked, they went for like five hundred dollars, but I think yeah. it probably goes for between five and eight hundred. Right. Correct? Well, this one was not in good condition. Like okay. it was rough. The buttons were sticky. It was crusty with dust. The um, inside uh, labels for the song, some of them were missing. Uh -huh. The front, the chrome had some rusting. So I mean, so it, like a two hundred dollar one. Right. And I would be willing to do that. So I was like, you know, we'll see what the guy gets it for and what he's willing to sell it to me for. Well, I get a text later that afternoon because we both thought that it was for $25 because it had a, a sticker. And I was like, oh, man, no. Did it, if, was you, it if you get that for $25, I just, you know, I was already like, man. So he texts me and he goes, no, they wanted $700 for it. <clears throat> and he goes, do you want me to still pick it up? And I said, no, absolutely not. So it sat there and I didn't go back on half off day because I'm like, that's still three fifty or whatever. And I, I just, decided you could have made an that. offer. I could have, you could have said, look here, this is a mess. Issues. Yeah. And the cord was all messed up in the back and like, I, it would have, if been it good. worked and it was, yeah, I mean, if it sure. worked and it needed to be cleaned, fine, but it didn't work. The other ones did. And they had some beautiful, huge, enormous, mid-century jukeboxes that were playing when I walked in, which was kind of chaotic because there was like four jukeboxes all playing different <laughs> The dueling jukeboxes. Time. Yes, the dueling jukeboxes. But yeah, I didn't get the tabletop one. I'm following one on eBay right now that's like 176, mm. but it doesn't work. And yeah, it's got some issues, which I, I just like the look of them, but. I still think that it's worth it. And I do like them. When I think about those, there's, a, there's an episode of, the twilight zone where it's a very good episode by the way and they're like at this diner and it's one of those like little machines and actually the machine was a real machine and they're hard to find but it's like this little devil icon on there do you remember this yes, episode yes, and yes. it feeds you your fortune or whatever yes uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah so it kind of reminds me of that even though it's a jukebox and not a well, well, I remember going to Crown Candy Kitchen in St. Louis when I was young with my aunt. <sighs> that place, I tell you. <laughs> and we lined up outside. She was all excited to take me there. And uh, it's a novel place. The food is just so-so. The food's and not the good. And the portions are big. But the, the, you know, 1950s diner, I mean, with all original stuff, is really cool to see. Mm. And I remember she gave me a quarter. And I may have been two quarters because I don't remember what they might have upped it to at the time. But I remember putting it in and pressing the button on the little tabletop jukebox and just being so excited that, you know, it was like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. 
That so. place is a letdown, by the way. Uh, I wouldn't go. <laughs> well, I disagree. I it, no, I, I would. I would agree I with would, myself and say don't go. I, I would suggest going to the Fountain on Locust. Well, sure. Before to going eat. to Crown Candy, but I would definitely go to Crown Candy and look at it and get some candy at the little shop. And Just to look is fine, but then yeah. why waste your time? That's not a very good side of town either. Well, no, the, the side of town that's in go in the morning, but I think that the um, milkshakes are good. They're big, but they're good. And I would I would go just to see it because it is it's cool inside. Like they have all original Coca-Cola speaking of trays food and that, stuff. Speaking of food that I'm I don't like, um we've had this debate. Before. Yes, we have. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think I might, but go on. Okay. So there's a certain restaurant that's like so popular. And everywhere I look, every time I drive by one, their parking lot is full. And I've only ate there one time. And the one time I ate there, I was severely disappointed, like usual. <laughs> no. I, I <laughs> well, did... Jeffrey's got high standards well, for food. Which it, was a simple, a it was a simple food that I had, and it was just ugh, cheddars. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What is the consensus out there, and why do people care for cheddar so much? Mm -hmm. I had it, and I thought it was way overhyped. Yeah. Now, this I was, agree. however, this was 10, 12 years ago. But when it first came into Fairview Heights, over where I was previously, mm -hmm. I just am like, why is that place so busy all the time? My dad's parents, um, BB and Papa, they love Chatters. And every time I go visit them in Texas, that was a big thing. Like we'd go to Chatters. And my dad and I always talked about how it was just like so so. But we would go because, of course, they loved it and thought it was the bee's knees. Well, we got one here where I live, and my elderly neighbor loves Chatters. Like, thinks it's just the cat's meow because it's simple southern food. And, right. Bees knees, yeah. cat's meow, the cricket's mascara, <laughs> I, the donkey's eyelash, <laughs> the butler's but, buffet. <laughs> what did I say to you the other day that you never heard of? A lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah, uh, you're basically tracks. a walking dictionary from 1922. <laughs> That's true. You're not wrong. You're like the Katafufa no Haken. You're what? like, what? Can you translate, please? The Sheffield. The oh, I said, don't upset the apple cart. Yeah. And you were like, what is that? I'm like, why would an apple cart be upset? You should call it a name. No, it's like, apparently it's a, a yeah. euphemism. 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 Euthanize. It comes a euphemism. from euphemism. A real, like, thing that would happen. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, but but when I went to back to Chatters, when I went to Chatters the last time with my neighbor, I got a, a baked potato and a steak, and the steak was like so rubbery, I could throw it across the room and it would probably knock somebody out. Like I couldn't <laughs> even cut it. And then the baked potato, no joke, it came, it was like this big. It had literally, it looked like someone had taken sour cream out of one of those squirt tubes and just like put like yeah. a, a highlighter line of sour cream, and it had maybe at minimum three little shavings of cheddar cheese and one chive. I kid you not exactly one chive. And I showed it to the manager and I'm like, look, I'm not a complainer by nature. I'm happy, you know, usually, but this is just not a baked potato. And she goes, Oh no, we're so sorry. We'll go get that fixed. And it came back and it wasn't any better. And I decided that was the last time I'm eating. There. I forgot what I had gotten before, but it wasn't. I think it was like a sandwich or something and I wasn't pleased. Um, yeah. I don't get the hype. Same with Cracker Barrel. I was going to mention Cracker Barrel, but speaking of which, we're going to have a grand old spread in a couple days. <laughs> yeah, our apartment's doing a Thanksgiving uh, event. Catered nice. yeah, by catered Cracker Barrel. By Cracker Barrel. I'm like, mm. Mm. But it will just be fun to see my neighbors and I can't complain about free food, but I'm not super. I well. can't either. As much as I complain about food, I can't complain about I can give critiques, but I can't complain yeah, about free food. food. Well, and actually, I've never had Cracker Barrels Thanksgiving. Yes. Whatever that means. So maybe it will be okay. I don't know. I used to go to Cracker Barrel all the time with my grandparents when I was little. And I, I loved going because my grandpa would let me have soda from a bottle, like the root beer bottles, which my mom never let me have. So I thought it was so exciting. Do you, I was going to say, do you think the quality has gone down or do you yeah. think our expectations have gone up i think probably both i think the quality has gone down but also as we get older and our palates become more refined we're like mm. this is 
when I was younger, I thought Golden Corral was great because I'm like, look at the variety. But then, you know, as an adult, I would not go back to Golden Corral unless that was the only place on earth and I was starving. And like, you know, if I didn't eat it, I was going to die. Then I would eat there. (laughs) I mean, they've got quantity, but anytime you've got quantity, it's hard to keep up with quality. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm not trying to be a snob about it. Like really, I know people like it, but I go there and I'll try like, I don't know, so many different things. And the problem is like, I don't want to finish anything because it's not good enough to finish. So I think, well, maybe I'll try this and maybe that's better. And then you end up wasting so much stuff because everything is just, it falls way short than what I expect it should. You know, I read though with Golden Crown, I don't know that this is true. So guys don't quote me on this, but I did read, they put an additive in their food that makes you more hungry. So you want to go back and eat more and have some sort of chemical in it. That makes no sense. And why would they do that? So that you, why would you want to eat more? They're, they're, they're rising their food costs. Well, it's, it's, they want you to stay there and come back and eat more. But I read, you can Google it. it there, this chemical does exist. It's like a spray they put on food. Oh, come now. Yep. They probably do. However, I would assume if you're a restaurant, you want to keep people from eating your food. In fact, that's why they make, in my opinion, they make the cheapest things taste the best. That's so probably what they put the spray on. All so the carbs. I'm just saying like all the carbs mm-hmm. are very cheap foods to yeah. create. Mashed potatoes, bread, um, mac and cheese, macaroni. Those things fill you up by nature. So if they make those taste really good and then they make the expensive things taste not so good, mm-hmm. then yeah, it's like the illusion that there's variety and all mm-hmm. that, but then you don't really want to eat the other crap. Yeah. I, the, the last time I ate at Golden Corral, I saw a kid literally like stick his hands in his mouth and then reach into the sprinkles at the ice cream station. Oh, and oh. like, I was like, nope, I'm, I'm done now. Thank you. Well, we're going to have a buffet on the cruise. Yes. So, but it's a cruise and it's they cruise. have there's higher quality. standards. <laughs> there's quality. It's a princess cruise. So there's quality. <laughs> there's, then well, it was a I carnival mean, cruise. And I've been on a half dozen carnival cruises, so I know that. Yeah, but I think Princess is nice. Um, I hope. I've been on I've been on two Princess cruises, and the two that I was on were nice. We're going to be going on a twelve day cruise. Our, my longest cruise. Yours? My longest was I think six days. It was an Alaskan cruise. Yeah, so this will be your longest. Yeah, then this will be my longest. Wow. It's exciting. And I was telling Jeffrey, I, I just don't know really what to, to pack for something like this. It's new territory for me, um, which seems kind of crazy because, you know, but I'm like all the different things we're doing and what you might need. Yeah, we have three excursions. Yeah. Well, for those, you just wear your bathing suit. Well, but the one's not a bathing suit excursion. The ones that we're doing that has the coffee tasting and we get to see the coffee fields. Well, you've got regular clothes. You yeah, just wear clothes. Clothes. You but, know, that normal stuff. Sure. But it's it's thinking about like heat, temperature. You know, it's, it's different. Okay. You know. I mean. Because <laughs> I have a lot. Shorts of- and t-shirts. That's all I have to deal with. And bring <laughs> yeah, a couple pants. You could be easy too. I could be you- easy. <laughs> I think I overcomplicate myself. Yes. It's the t- it's, it's the ties and the hats and the brooches that complicate things. Yeah, well. I'm and happy. the shoes and the socks and the pants and the shirt. It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's every I, single I, thing you I'm wear. I'm simple with pants. I just wear jeans. That is, you could have like a whole spread of like corduroy and, 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 and. I do have corduroy pants. I don't wear them. And one of those things called those cotton ones. The sh- c- 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 not. <laughs> well, you seersucker. I no. love seersucker, and I have a seersucker suit. No, what's those pants called that are the like... linen? Yeah, what are those called? Well, I don't know what. They're no, called. they're called the something. Will no. Okay, I don't. They're know. called chinos. Oh, those. Yeah, I could have some. See, she could. Me. But I, I live in jeans pretty much. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think I should talk about the elephant in the room. Yes. The elephant in the room. 
Donald Trump. No, <laughs> no that's what's not. No, I mean he's a that he's a Republican Party. That's why. Oh, I, I see. I got you. I didn't mean he's it. an elephant. No, no, no. I knew that. I just never mind. I'll tell you after the podcast. Let's not create a war in our comment section. Oh, I don't really care about the. Uh, that has nothing to do with anything. But I mean, I just I, the way I said that so flippantly. Now it's going <laughs> to cause even more problem. I, I personally don't care what's happening in the world. Oh, that sounds bad again. That, that doesn't sound okay. So everybody's going to take everything I say. I'm just like living my life, and I'm doing the best yep. I can, and I ignore anything that I disagree with, and I pay attention to the things that I like. And that's actually a good way to live. Just focus in your little corner of the world. Yeah. Focus on like creating kindness and doing, you know, little do the things, things you and, like. Don't yeah. do the things you don't like. Wow. Who would have thought? And then you're happier mm -hmm. for it. Because actually, you know, you're able to do more by just focusing in your little world with the people that you can make an impact with, that you surround yourself with. And the elephant in my it. room is why am I here? Yes. <laughs> hmm. An existential crisis. Why am I here? No, why am I here in Jacksonville? Because so I was last last we all heard I was supposed to be traveling around the country. So I vlogged a video and I don't it hasn't came out yet. I'm kind of like, do I want to put it out? I don't know. But I vlogged like I think it was like two or three days of this traveling situation. Long story short, and a spoiler of for it all is I had some really bad problems with the van that I that I have the, my little one and it's going into the shop tomorrow but then they're supposed to look at it on Thursday but <sighs> long story short I'm just not gonna bother and I'm just gonna live here in Jacksonville <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just done I'm just so done and essentially what 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 it is is all these problems sort of I, i'm just I'm, I'm done fighting with apparently what the universe will say is telling me that i should just stop trying to go that direction in life your poor van has been having a lot of issues i will say though i push so hard going that way because there's also a thought process of like what well, i forget the, the the terminology is but if it's if it's hard it's worth doing or i don't know what the term basically like if you work for something mm -hmm. that's basically you try, you put in the work and try to make it worth your while like the, the best things are wait i know the saying but i can't think of it at the moment like if you if you do something if you persevere it's a persevere, then you'll have a bigger bigger pain bigger gain, yeah the payoff something. will be better yeah so i yeah. thought well like if you just keep going you're kind of like um what's the word point is i don't care point is i'm not doing that the good so, thing is the van is still pretty much car size so you're able to mm -hmm. drive around in it oh anywhere. it definitely there was really no uh loss in you know monetarily speaking because the value of the car is the value of the car and mm -hmm. i think i spent i don't know 1500 on the build out so not a lot and if I want to sell it, I can sell it as a whole package kind of a thing mm -hmm. for maybe someone who wants to, <laughs> to travel. However, um, I might just hang on to it for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. Just it's a car. So it's a car and it drives. It's a Ford. It's good. You know, <laughs> it's decent. well, <laughs> hopefully the people at the, Oh yeah. will be able to fix it. So I think there's some sensors going wrong. I, I don't want to get into too much of these specifics. Well, I guess I could. I don't think I touched upon it in the video that I vlogged. No, I didn't. But basically, it stopped working completely. Yeah. Jeffrey like, called me. Well, Marco Polo me on Sunday, and he's like, so I'm at a gas station, and my van is not working, and there's these sensors going off, and I called AAA, and they won't come until tomorrow. tomorrow. And he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, come on, Jeffrey, come back here. You got a place. <laughs> so the the check engine light is on. There's three exclamation marks on. One of them is a red exclamation mark. Oh, with a there's, squiggly line, probably. Then there's a light for the traction, the stability control that's on, and a light that's on for the um, ABS braking, I guess, automatic braking system. 
And then there's, um, there was another. There was another, what was it? Well, while I was driving, it was like trans, it, like on the display, it said transmission issue, go to service basically. I'm like, I just had this trans. So I think that's a sensor or something. But then also on top of all of that, the speedometer is on zero, even though I'm going 65 miles an hour. It does, the speedometer thingy oh, doesn't go, good. doesn't move. Uh, and there is no readout of your miles per gallon or um, oh. all of that's gone. And the car my brother had in high school, the the gas gauge didn't read for a while. So he literally had no clue how much gas was in the car at any given time. Oh, no. Which was that, just a be... pain to deal with. Mm -mm -mm. I could not deal. <laughs> yeah. No, that was a mess. And then also, so when you turn the car on, it like goes, <laughs> and then it kind of like dies. So, but I learned, I did get it going. I did get it moved. I learned that if you turn it on and you immediately shift gear and then go, it works. Did you just drive straight through here? Because you didn't want to turn it off, probably. I did until I got, I, I got like uh, 30 minutes away and I was, I, the gas thing was going so, and it doesn't, the readout doesn't tell me how many miles I have left till empty. So I was like, I am not, I'm not going to like chance this and be stuck on the side of the road with no gas. Mm -hmm. So I pulled over and I did get gas and it did the same thing and it died. So I, I just, I went and I switched gear really fast and then I went and thing about it is once it was in gear and you were driving it it drives perfectly it's just that um none of those <laughs> gears work <laughs> that's so crazy cars I tell you are just a pain just a pain and the TPS sensors the tire pressure sensors need to be changed well which are the ones that tell you if your tire pressure is low so it's probably gonna. It's probably gonna be another thousand dollars. I don't know, but it needs to be fixed. So, well, I'm here. You're here. <laughs> it's fun that you're here, and we get to um, be here for you. Get to be here for the apartment party again, which will be neat. Um, yeah, the one that we were just day. talking about, yeah. the Thanksgiving one. And I was supposed to drive. This was all. That's so why the embarkation. The def, it was supposed to be that I was going to up towards Fenton, Missouri, where my people are doing their Thanksgiving stuff. And um, no, that's not going to happen. I was going to go see Barb. I was going to do the whole thing. But it's just not in the cards. So yeah. stop fighting things and just go with the flow. That's what I'm going to do. That's I'm accepting fun. the fate that I'm just destined to be your Will or Jack to your... I'll call you... <laughs> Karen, not Grace. <laughs> well, you know. You're more of a I, Karen than a Grace. Yeah, yeah. I'm not so stuck up. Except your voice isn't like, hey, or whatever she does. It's <laughs> or, or not stuck up. That's not the word. What was I looking for? Uh, high strung? High strung and stuffy. No. Yeah, that's not me. Um, but I think that's exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Oh, we have a game. Yep. The game is called, we don't know what it's called, but. The premise is, <clears throat> well, you can describe it. Yeah, this game is inspired actually by Fat Birds. I was uh, watching their show on Friday, Flippin' It's Up, and it's so fun. And they had... Well, so if, for some that don't have a clue who what we're talking about, Fat Bird finds their vintage resellers yes. as well. But they have a nightly show on Friday nights about... It's called Flippin' and Sippin', and they play games, kind of. It's almost they like a podcast games. style as well, yeah. It's but it's just live. And they sell a few items, and they chat, and it's really fun. And they did this game on their Friday night show, and I thought, oh, this is so good. We could do this on the podcast. So the premise of it is, is uh, there's basically a question asking whether there's more of something in the world. So for example, the one they did on Friday was like, are there more friends episodes or are there more types of pasta? And the answer turned out there was actually more types of pasta in the world than friends episodes, which was completely shocking to me. So yeah, this is an honor of fat birds. Wow. So I have 20 prompts. I'm just going to read okay. through the first 10 for you and then you'll return 10 to me okay. and they have the answers. Sounds good. 
Okay, are there more trees? Or maybe I should just not read the answers. I'll just pay attention not to the answers and we can okay. both answer them sure. kind of in our own way. Yeah. Are there more trees or stars visible to the naked eye in the night sky? Ooh. Are there more trees or stars visible to the naked eye in the Okay, well, I'm going to, I have a, what do you call it? What is that called? A sentence structure, kind of a. Uh, um, what do you mean? Like I'm, nitpick, I'm nitpicking the, the way that it's written because with the way that it's written, the answer is very clear because it says, are there more trees or stars visible to the naked eye in the night sky? Well, if it's night, you're not going to see any trees because no. it's dark. But you will see stars. I would say stars because there's just more of them. But it also does depend where you live. So this question sort of. So if you're in a city, you're going to see probably more trees than you are stars. Wait, are there more trees? Okay, so. But. If, so if the question is, are there more trees? Or are there more. Um, yeah, that's how it should be written. Written. But the way that's written, it can kind yeah. of be. This is just semantics, um, but. That's the word I was looking for, semantics. So the answer I would really give is um, trees. There's more trees I than, than what you can visibly see. I say stars. But what's the answer? Oh, okay. Um, trees. There are over <laughs> 3 trillion trees and only about 9,000 stars wow. visible to the naked eye. Okay. There we go. But I'm serious. The way that it was written, it, I yeah. would say that it should be stars because of the way that they wrote the question. Yes. Because yes. it, it's written. Visible to the it naked read, eye. It reads as though like you're looking at both of them at night. Yes, exactly. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Next. Are there more cars or bicycles in the world? Cars or bicycles? I would Hmm. Hmm. Because, see, not everybody has a car, and with urban cities and development now, more people are opting to bike to work and do that type of stuff. But I would go with cars. I would still go with cars. Yeah, I think cars. That's, that's kind of what I think I'm locking in my answer. Yeah, good cars. Bicycles. What? There are about 1 billion cars and over 2 billion bicycles globally. Okay, who's calculating all this too, by the way, is what I want to know. Is there like a research team that's in charge of counting bicycles? Yes. That's very important work there. Okay. okay. Are there more books or mobile phones in the world? Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's a tough one because then you think about libraries. See, I, I have to go with books. I go with books as well. Yeah. I mean, when they when they do a book, I mean, they do print like thousands at a time. They do. And they make thousands of phones at a time, but they're or actually, I think they make millions. I don't. But I'm still going with books. But then think about all the antique books in libraries, books in, well, schools don't really have books anymore. They're all iPads. Depends but, on what you kind of book, because if you think of like true. all the little manuals inside of Things that whenever yes. you buy something. Is that considered Even when you buy a phone, there's a book. Mm -hmm. A little booklet. A booklet? Is a booklet the same as a book? I want to know. I would assume Is so. a phone the same as a phone-lit? Mm. I just mean, I don't know. Well, that could a be our new lit. 90s phone that we're inventing that's, like, coming back. A pager? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted a it's pager. It's a phone-lit. Our phone light. I wanted a pager so bad as a kid. I know you told me. Yep. Yeah. I don't know what you want me to do about it. I know there's nothing you do about it, but I just thought they were cool. But I, I was just thinking of one of those Yo Mama So Fat jokes. And I, okay, Yo Mama So, <laughs> Yo Mama So Fat, she uses the VCR as a pager. Oh my gosh. I, we used to have your mama. Do your mama's so fat, they had to grease the doorway and hold a Twinkie on the other side oh to get her through. God. We used to have Yo Mama joke competitions in school, and I will say I'm not proud of this, but I did win. Mm. I won every single one. Okay. I was good at it. Uh, oh, the answer. There are more mobile phones. What? This is just. There are over great. 7 billion mobile phones, while there are roughly 130 million. Wait a freaking minute. This, this, this. I don't like this answer. Mm-mm-mm. 
Okay. They changed the game because they said there are roughly 130 million unique book titles. And so that's not the same as books. No, it's not. Book titles are not the same. That's, they're losers. Okay. That's not even how this question should have. Mm -mm. So when Fabridge did this, they actually had a card game that they got from somewhere. So this is chat that we're using. Chat GPT. Yeah. That's ridiculous. How so, dare you? Yeah, that's not right. I, I still think we're right on the books. Yes, because because I said so. No, because it just logically seven makes sense. Billion mobile phones. I don't know who's counting this and how they like, come think up about with it. This. One person has usually one phone, right? Yeah. Okay, but like it's very easy to have for one person to have like at least a handful of books around their house. But okay, they don't they, have a handful. Are of they phones. counting? I'm gonna be devil, devil's advocate here. Are they counting every phone that's ever existed? No. Are they counting? No. Like, imagine someone like. No, it says, are there more books or mobile phones mobile in the world? Phones. If if they're gone, they're not in the world anymore. Yes, they're but atoms. I, but when I say gone, I mean like think about all the dead phones that are sitting in drawers. Think I don't about, have any in drawers. Do you? Oh, I used to, and then mm. I sold them. I mm. sold my first iPhone. They probably scrap them after a certain point, though, right? Scrap them for parts for new phones or new technology Maybe. or melt them but down. But think about all the ones in museums, like the old big bag phones. Think about all the books in museums. That's true. I don't know. Anyway. anyway questions rigged. Rigged. Are there more chickens or humans in the world? Definitely humans. Definitely chickens. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't. I just feel like it's chickens. Know. All right. Well, I, let pick the odd odd duck. The odd chicken. The odd chicken. <laughs> there are more chickens. You are good at this. No, I'm not. That's the first one I got right. I think. Well, no, you got the tree one right. Yeah, that's obvious. There are more well, chickens. Over twenty five billion chickens. There are more chickens. In the world. That's insane. Versus eight billion. Well, I guess humans. it does make sense because we have to eat the chickens and we eat the eggs for the chickens, and so there's got to be lots of chickens. Circle of life. <laughs> Which the new Lion King's coming out. It's the wheel of fortune. And wicked. Wicked. I am so excited about that. Me too. That's okay. gonna be fun. Are okay. there more bees or dogs in the world? Bees easily, hands bees. down. There has to be more bees. And and the bees in their knees. I bet there's more knees on the bees than there's dogs on the trees. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of knees on bees and bees on knees. But there's not lots of dogs inside of trees. No, no. Not there's since... cats inside of trees, but not dogs inside. That's of trees. true. It's an yes. epidemic. There's more <laughs> bees. Trillions of bees compared to about one yeah. billion dogs. Well, there would be more dogs if it wasn't for Ohio. And those. <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> I'm asking for it, apparently. On this you were going to no. make the comment section just go bananas. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. <laughs> Obviously, I'm joking. That's yes, just China. No, I'm joking. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Jeffrey. <laughs> We tried to kill our podcast. No, away. I'm <laughs> okay. Next. Okay, what's the next one? And there's nothing wrong with eating animals. So, and in fact, I would argue that animals we just anthropomorphize certain ones just because we like them. For instance, why do we decide that this is a whole side tangent? Why do we decide that dogs and cats should not be eaten? I'd like to know. Well. Okay, well, think about how hard it is to, like, it's sad to think about, but how hard it is to eat a cat, like all the hair. How do you? You, how hard is it to eat a chicken? You pluck the feathers. I guess, but the feathers are bigger than the little hairs. And then, but have you ever thought about other animals with lots of hair, like um, oh, cows? Oh, deer, you just skin them. Okay, and what do you think you do with a dog? Well, that's awful. See? That's terrible. The problem is we give them personalities, and people do it's this in other cultures, problem. too, with different animals. But like, no, I don't mean the problem. I mean, like... I mean, it's good we have companions. <laughs> like, dogs were made for all kinds of things, but hunting and protecting and... But do you know that dogs are ancestors of, like, foxes and wolves? Well, sure. Which we do consume. 
We don't eat wolves. Oh, do we not? I don't like I thought so. they did in that movie Revenant or something. Oh, that okay, was a bear. Well, maybe they, they it was but a bear. Like day to day, no. I feel like people do hunt wolves. They do eat kangaroos, though, in Australia because they have so many of them. Nate Aww. told me. Poor little things. I know. Well, Joey's. Okay, this is depressing. But do you understand that they're at the base? Maybe you don't understand. I, I'm not agreeing with you on this. I'm not agree I'm not saying that this should be something that we go and strive for. I'm just saying that if you wanted to be intellectually honest with yourself, then you do have to realize the fact that there is no moral stance on one animal versus an other animal. Unless you go off of consciousness and the perceived consciousness and emotional okay. intelligence well, off of each animal. Sure, but I just yeah. I mean But then I you say that I'll tell you uh, there are certain animals with very high intelligence levels, much higher than dogs and cats. You know, rats are really, really smart. Pigs. Pigs are all, pigs. pigs. I think pigs actually I read that pigs are smarter than dogs. That's probably true. My my neighbor that watches, um, or not my neighbor, well, Brandon watches sometimes Louie, but my other friend Adora, she was telling me the other day, she goes, yeah. Louie, you know, she's a goofball. She goes, sometimes you look at Louie and the lights are on. And other <laughs> times you look at Louie and there's nothing there. And I was like, you're not wrong. <laughs> Louie is just carefree. <laughs> you know, I think a pig would outsmart her. But man, if you're trying to cheat her on food, she does know. She knows she's getting cheated. She doesn't get the... Well, that's just like instincts talking yeah, right there. She's, you know, but... I'm not saying, look, I'm in full accordance and agreeance that dogs and cats, we should, like, not eat them. Okay, like, as long as we're on that page. But, but, that, but that's But that's not um, morally objective. That's that, That's just our own subjective interpretation of animals. Yeah. I mean, my I grew up with Dad, and he hunted, and we would go and, and hunt deer, and I never had a problem with that. But when Dad wanted to go rabbit hunting, I was like, nope. Oh, see, I'm just saying, like, in... I didn't if, go with him. If you that. really think about it, like there could be a world in which, imagine a parallel dimension in which we valued pigs and we had pe pigs as pets. That's true. I see what you're saying with that. Like if we didn't grow up with this like societal yes. norm of like, oh, these are so cute and adorable, and we had no perceived thought that oh these are adorable and like we valued say possums or something else exactly uh, yeah i okay i see what you're saying that's there. all i'm okay. saying I, I'm, I'm saying that like really technically speaking there's no reason i mean there's no like quality that a dog or a cat has that another animal doesn't have other as than well their cuteness factor but that's subjective that is subjective some people find snakes cute that's true and that is not not for me i'm just saying like yep some people think snakes are but, adorable but spiders too i'd like to know i would like to know if there was a study ever to be well i don't know how you would do this but if you were to have like humans raised favoring a certain animal as a pet and like is the cuteness factor inherent as a human to those dogs and cats or is or is it a learned behavior like would you would would in this scenario would they find you know like spiders and bees more more um what's the word i'm looking for more cute like cute than adorable other animals well, I do think part of it might be based on your experience with the animal. Like if you grew up with a certain type of dog, per se, that, you know, not a lot of people maybe find cute, but you had a positive experience with those dogs. And that was like the breed your family had. You're like, oh, they're so adorable. And then someone else, you know, just like with pugs, not everyone thinks they're cute. Some people think they're ugly. And that's totally valid because they got the smushed face. You know, it's like they ran into a a giant dartboard or something. The lights aren't on. <laughs> but but <laughs> but when you grew up with them, like I grew up around pugs, you know, through neighbors and friends and such, I just kind of thought they were comical, adorable little creatures. And so I always wanted one and now have one. But for other people that 
you know, aren't big pug fans or didn't have a positive experience, maybe they didn't find them cute. No? It's a whole side quest. It is. We, we've derailed completely from the game, but that's okay. We'll do like two more. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm scrolling to a different one. Oopsie. Wait. Accidentally read the answers. Well, oh, I'll, oh, these well. are just these are just for you now. Okay, all right. This is just for me. Are are there more houses or apartments in the world? I oh, well, I mean, I'm trying to think about like high rises and how many would be in in a building. But I still think there's more houses in the world. I have to go with houses. It's also like, what do they define a house? Like, is a mobile home considered a house? I was saying, I would think like a sing, uh, detached okay. dwelling. All right. I say houses. It's the... You are correct. Yay. I finally got one. Yes. More houses. Globally, individual houses are more numerous than apartment units. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfecto. Patronus. <laughs> That's something I randomly started saying like a while ago. It is. Perfecto it is. Patron. But it's like, what is the actual one? It's, um, it's from Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, obviously. but what's the real one? It's I don't know what the real one is. That one, no, 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 Patronus. Okay. Yeah, but I love it. That's your catchphrase. Perfecto Patronus. All right. Are there more trees or cars in the world? Has to be more trees. Yeah, I just, I don't even have a reason why I just think, all right, what's the answer? <laughs> yes, it's trees. Okay. I was yeah. trying to make you second guess yourself. <laughs> well, I wasn't going because I knew I was hopefully right. You knew you were hopefully right. Yes, and that's good enough for me. Are there more? Now, this one you should know because apparently it was asked before. Okay. Are there more windows or doors in the world? Oh, I never heard the answer to this one, but I definitely think there's more doors than there are windows. Yes. And you know why? Is because almost, almost as almost every house, vehicle, and yep. building has multiple doors, sometimes yep. more than windows. Yeah, that's what I figured. Because you think about all the cars and all the doors and different things. Yeah. That That's a fun game. It really does make you think. And then when you get the answer, sometimes it's mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's a good party game. Faux shizzle, Miss Frizzle. <laughs> you know, Miss Frizzle from the Magic School Bus. Gosh. I, I thought she was show. just so fun of a person. She was. I wanted her to be my teacher. I mean, in, in essence, she was. But on the screen. She reminds was. me of Mrs. Garrett from The Facts of Life. Oh, yeah. Girls, girls. She that does one. look like her. Well, and she talks like her. Yep, and she has similar hair. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen that show in ages. Me either. You know, I do you remember the show Clarissa Explains mm. It All? I was watching um, a show, and in the, the show, they had a poster, like, in the girl's bedroom for Clarissa Explains It All. And I was like... Wow. What an odd poster. That's a very specific poster. I've never thought of having a poster for a TV show. I mean, I had a Friends poster when I was in college in my apartment, but, you know, I love Friends, still yeah, do. You're an exception. Yeah, I am. But no, I've never, like, for for people, for, for artists, or for maybe a movie, if you're really into the movie. I mean, I, I see it as, like, you know, if you're a teenager and you have it on your wall. Yes. Yeah. There's a time and a place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I've been very provocative. This, 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 this. Was. So I'm sure there's going to be lots to say in the comments. Yeah. But, but it's just all in fun. It's it all in jest. You're, you're just a joker. I'm just a, a kidder. Yeah. Not, not like the movie. I just mean. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, this has been a fun episode. Actually. Touche. Yep. And we're going to go get chili now. The food. Yes. The Not food. like, ooh, ooh. oh, yeah. <laughs> Even though it is a little chilly, I say it is my fingers. Feel my fingers. Are your fingers cold? Oh, my gosh. You're cold. I'm, like, sweating over here. Mm -hmm. And Jeffrey came in, and he said, I'm freezing, but I do keep my apartment very cold. You do. Yeah. All right. Well, 
Well. That's it for us, I think. Darn well. We're oh, done. Bye. And check out the secret room if you want a little bit more fun bonus content. Yeah, do it. I dare you. See what happens. Um, we've got a handful of, no, we've got like over 20, I think, people over there watching our bonus stuff. There's multiple videos, multiple videos for like every week. I think we're pretty much putting out a, a bonus and then mm -hmm. randomly like photos and stuff. Yep. Photos. And we'll get some more now that we're together. Mm. That'll be fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you're having trouble joining the secret room, we will make sure to pin the link to the top of the chat. I think, did we confirm or, or figure out whether or not it's better on a computer? I think it works better for some people on a laptop than I think a phone. everything is easier on a computer. Yeah, I think that's the, so if you're on a phone, maybe that's the problem. Yeah, you're the problem. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're on Hinge, Jeffrey, on Hinge this episode. No, but some, the, phone, the apps, they're not yep. built the same. No, you know, they not. don't have as many little places for your finger to go. That's so true. Isn't that weird? But <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some food in your steps. All right. So anyways, thanks for watching. Bye.